Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're going to take a look at how you can work with VDBs directly in Blender. So previously we talked about a wonderful tool that has to do with, you know, volume simulation, you know, simulation itself as it is when you want to make things like fire and all that cool stuff. And the name of the tool is Embergen. And we did go through this tool. We talked about a lot of things that you guys need to know. So in case you are trying to make simulation like this, then probably this tool is for you. The way you control this thing is just insane as the parameters is just very easy to play with. And you can see that in real time you have this thing going. So what we're about to do today is we will take this tool and export it out. So I reached out to the guys at Yanga FX and they did give me a license to actually, you know, play around with the tool and share it with you guys. And hopefully we're going to see the beta coming out very, very soon. So with this right here, what I'm going to do is actually, I think we should find some very interesting scene to work with. Okay. So we have this cool scene right here and you can see it's playing in real time, crazy stuff going on. We can rotate around and you can also see this thing. I can press the space bar to spot it. I can go right in here and investigate all of this stuff and we can do some very insane stuff directly with this. But what we want to do is take this over to Blender and how we're going to do it is come over to this section that has to do with export. And I've actually gone ahead to specify about 1,200. Of course, we're not going to use that crazy amount. But I specified this amount and we're going to use the VDB capture to generate this. So with this here, I'm just going to go through and click on generate VDB and save it. And I will see you guys in Blender. All right. So we have Blender 2.83, the build that is supporting this and it has to do with new objects. So previously, they did tease new objects coming over to Blender and we're going to use this new build to actually talk about all of these things. Link to where you can find this graphic build is going to be in the description so you can check it out. So what are we going to do take out the default cube i'm so sorry and we're going to take that out come over here and simply add a volume you can actually do that from here by holding down shift and a and then we're going to go through and add volume and do a vdb import so with this here i'm going to also come over and do a vdb import so with our fire browser i'm going to go all the way to 03 because that's where i saved it you can click on the first one press a to get all these things selected and with that done i'm going to also click on the import button so with that imported in you're going to notice that we have this here and there is also a new object that you can see right there so this exported two different attributes we have the density and also have the temperature and to actually see how this thing works if we fire up embergen one more time you would notice that while we were about to export we did select the density and also temperature you can choose to export multiple you know, attributes like the velocity, fuel and flames. And if you want to check these things out, you can also go over to the preview section where you can check out all of these things and see how the maps are, especially if you want to export these as either sequences or flipbook. So with this in mind, depending on the VDB you're importing, most of them might not come with temperature, which is actually called heat in some programs. Some of them might come with it but depends on what you're working with, you can simply play with these tools. So what I'm going to do right now is simply press the playback so that we can see this. And of course, you can see that this is a huge, huge, uh, you know, a huge VDB object that we have here. So I'm going to simply select this, press S on our keyboard to scale this down because we have a huge mushroom going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale this down, press the period key to zoom right in and let's play this back one more time. And you can see this here. How we are going to shade this is relatively simple because from here onwards, we don't need to do anything here. We just need to understand that the temperature actually deals with the fire. Okay. And this has to do with how heavy the, you know, the entire simulation is the density of the simulation. So if we come through to this other section, we'll be able to see this, but it's also worth knowing that you may want to turn this to on. Okay. So with this here, you can also use this. So I'm just going to go through, select the light and I can move this around so you can see we can simply move this around to take a look at what different things does or you can actually throw in a different sort of light which might be either a spotlight a point light a sunlight or an area light so we're going to get a huge light out which is going to be a sunlight and i'm also going to position this right about the point like this so with this right here 
the next thing which you would like to do is to go over to your shading so i'm just going to do that by dragging this right to this point and switch over to our shaders which we can do by coming over here and switch over to shading editor select the object that you want to work with and click on new so by simply clicking on new you will notice that automatically our principal volume has been mapped over to the volume section of our material output so with that in mind it's also worth knowing that we have this temperature tied up to this place and we we'll also have this density tied up to this place you can choose to play with how you want these things to look in your viewport right now we have the scores and we can also set this to fine and we have some refinement going there we can also choose to play with the density of how we want to see this in, in the viewport this is regardless of what the output is going to totally be like so with this in mind i'm going to switch over to our render where we're going to do our shading go over to where we have our render properties and we have ev so we're going to test out with ev because it's quite fast and easy and we're going to also switch over to the volumetrics and turn on shading so with this right here you can actually start seeing how this thing looks like so i'm just going to bring this down use this to control where the positioning is at a given point all right i'm also going to come through and select the fireball and for here what we want to do is increase the black body density so for the black body density i'm just going to go ahead and set it to one so you would now start noticing that we have this thing happening here in some cases you may not be able to see this thing going on and that might be because you have only one attribute that has been exported out so it is worth knowing that you need to actually consider the attributes that you want to work with before you proceed with that our black body intensity works hand in hand with what we have here as temperature so with this set to one i'm actually going to set this to 10 so we can have something way brighter you might also notice that we have a pixelated section directly here so how do we work with this pixelated thing what we need to do is simply go down to this part and you will notice our tiling size is set to 8. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to 2 and you can now notice that we have a much more cleaner looking thing happening here. At any point in time, you can also choose to play with the density depending on what you want to get. So I can punch this density all the way to 10 and we have a much more dense object going on there and I can set this you know all the way to one and you can see we have it way lighter so it's totally dependent on how you want to shade yourself how you want to work with this thing and for the color attribute if you do have or if you export you know an attribute that you want to use to drive the color you can also choose to use that or by default you can simply select this and drive the attribute of the color by simply using the color slider on its own so these are some very you know neat and helpful things that is coming over to blender 2.83 hopefully as this is in the build section which i'm going to put the link in the description for anyone that wants to get it and with this right here you can start you know getting some very cool stuff happening so if you go through and play this back you can see how this bounces across and how it drives through probably you're not comfortable with the shading that is coming from EV, you can also come through and switch this to cycles and right now we're using cpu and it's worth knowing that we already talked about the gpu refinement that is also going to be coming over to cycles so we're going to switch this to gpu and then set this to viewport anti-aliasing which is going to make you know the render happen really quick and probably neat so this is the volume object that is coming over to blender 2.83 right now the update still continues over time so in case you want to get this link is going to be in the description but then if you want to get vdbs that you can work with you can actually go to the links which i'm also going to put in the description where you can find cool vdbs you can get the one from disney and at the same time you can go to open vdbs and get some very good vdbs if you choose to work with those ones there are certain vdbs that you might probably not see temperature or heat they only come with density you know you making your own vdb and probably you want to get ember gen you can also go to the link in the description where you can get that and you can actually see that because this is real time animating here is extremely simple we can choose to start making those things directly from our torus if you want to start animating this it's very very simple and we also talked about this in the video so you can go through and check it out you can choose to animate your position you can also choose to animate the rotation so what you need to do is just simply turn on this and with the middle mouse you can select and add keyframes which you can 
rotate and just simply get things going for you so these are very cool stuff that you can play with and if you're very interested in a tool like this you can get the trial version and that's going to be about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from it you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this Peace.